Now, before we import any assets, let's build a plane tracker that works a little bit better than the default one. So let's right click and add a plane tracker. And then inside of here, let's add a null. And in the null, let's add a plane. And for that plane, let's rotate it 90 degrees just so it's flat. And to get rid of this, you can just tap W, A, S, or D to move the camera a little bit. So right now, when we restart and look around, this plane is locked to the ground. And oftentimes in Spark, it takes a few seconds for the plane tracker to really figure out where the flat surface is, where the plane is. And so we're going to build a loop that kind of triggers the plane tracker until the user taps. That way you get kind of a better feedback of what's going on. So let's open up the patch editor and drag in the plane tracker. So we want this to loop constantly until the user taps. So let's add a loop animation and we'll drag looped into the set tracker. So right now every second it's setting the tracker. So if we move around, nothing's happening. Let's restart. And still nothing's happening, but I think it might be because the screen position is zero. And so to get the screen position, we actually need to grab this device. And we'll grab the screen size, which is the resolution. And we need to divide by two so we can get the center. And we'll drag that into the screen position. So now you can see every second, this retracts to the center of the screen. So if we turn this from one to 0.01, we get this really smooth tracking as we rotate the camera around. So that way, as the user is looking around, they'll see exactly where the center of the screen is kind of locked onto. And of course, we don't want this to happen the entire time, so we need a screen tap. And that will toggle off this loop animation. So one way to do that is to use an if else. So if we screen tap, that will make the switch here. So we'll have that turn on as soon as the screen is tapped and that will turn on this. So we want this loop animation to play in the else. And when this is positive, it turns to the then which will be nothing. So it'll basically stop this loop. So we'll change this to pulse and plug this in. So now if we restart, you can see it's still tracking. And then if we tap, now it's locked on. And you can see the screen tap, turn this switch on, which turned on this if. And if this is positive, we're gonna use this top value and there's nothing going into this pulse, and so it basically kills this whole setup. So that just gives us this nice fluid motion, and then as we tap, it locks on. So with that set, let's import the actual model. We can delete this plane, and I'll rename these. And now we can drag in our asset. It's gonna be the town FBX. And this is an asset that I purchased from Bitgem, and I made a deal with them so that you guys can have full access to this model. So you get this kind of as a freebie for the course and you can use it however you want. You just can't sell it, of course. So we'll open this up and grab the model and drag it into the null here. And you can see that creates this gray shape over here. The texture is not applied to it in the FBX, so let's grab that as well. And this texture is amazing because it's pixel based so the file size of it is tiny. You can see each pixel is used very intelligently. And I think at 100% it's this big, so it's ultra small. It's only 16 kilobytes. So I'll drag that in, make sure no compression is on. And we also want to change the filtering from low to none. That means it won't try to blur or blend any of the pixels. So each pixel will stay super sharp. Now in the material, we'll make sure it's flat and then we'll assign that town texture and make sure the color is all the way white so we get the full value there. And now you can see our little town model. 
And in Cinema 4D, I did animate this asset and then exported it out. So there's actually a lot more to it than just these couple buildings. So if we select this model and under animation, it says no controller selected right now. But if we drop this down and create a new animation controller, it will automatically pull the animation from this Cinema 4D main thing here. And as you can see, it's working. It's working extremely quick, but this is the animation that I made in the file. And a quick way just to slow this down is if you select the animation playback controller, you can change the speed here. And the beauty of using the speed slider is that all this animation, even at 10%, is still super smooth. And that's because the keyframes interpolate between each other. So no matter how slow you make it, it'll still be smooth out here. And if we just zoom in and take a look, there's a lot of detail in here. And I think if we look at the asset summary, right now it's at 2.1 megabytes. And most of that is in this 3D model. And then the animation itself is quite small at 60 kilobytes. So really that's quite the impressive amount of detail to fit in just two megabytes. So in the next lesson, we'll make this more interactive and add a few more effects to it.